Nu ko, es esmu vecināts Samsung Nox skatuvē. Šķiet, ka ar daļu esam tikušies. Sejas ne, ne tik ļoti mainās, bet tomēr cilvēki cirkulē, kas ir forši man šķiet šādā formātā. Turpināsim un mūsu saruna miedarbība turpināsies ar mūsu lieldraugu Baltijas drošības konferences atbalstītāju drošo aizsargāto mobilo Samsung Nox. Lektors ieradies pie mums no Lielbritānijas un atklās vairākas aspektus par uzņēmumu datu drošību mobilajā sierīcēs mākslīgā intelekta laikā. Nu lūk, tāpēc uz skatuvi ar aplausiem sagaidām Samsung vecāko direktoru Philip Lander. Philip, it's time you move to the stage. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be back here. I had the pleasure of coming to Riga last year for the first time uh, and really enjoyed being part of this conference. There's one thing I will say at the start is when I was presenting last year, a few of my team members and colleagues were at the back and they were saying, we couldn't hear you at points. So if there's any point you can't hear me today, please just point upwards and I will try and uh, project my voice a little further. So what am I going to talk to you about today? Well. I work in the Samsung European office and uh, I'm focused on our mobile B2B business, leading that for the European region. And what I want to talk to you about today is the transformative change that we're seeing in the marketplace at the moment, globally, but also very strongly seen um, within Europe. There are two particular uh, trends at play, mega trends if you like, that we are uh, watching closely, enjoying and experiencing. Um, and the first of those is the increasingly powerful mobile solutions that are being deployed by business customers around the world. They're investing heavily in streamlining workflows and looking at how they can enhance every aspect that their team members are doing. I'm not getting a response on this at the moment. If you can assist, that would be great. Um, Bear with me one second. Again, no response. This is me. Uh, just introduce myself there. Let me give me a moment for the slides to catch up with um, what we're talking about. And the second major trend that we are seeing is the uh, increasing use of artificial intelligence, of AI, um, in the workplace. And many of our customers and partners are using this around the world to see how they can leverage this to identify efficiencies and reimagine their business models. So all embracing mega trends that we are seeing across our operation. Today, my aim is not least to get the slides to work uh, freely, um, but is to show you that these two trends are intertwined and show you that Samsung, and hopefully show you, that Samsung is not just ready for this transformation, we're right at the heart of it and making it happen. Why do we believe this? Well, hopefully, over the course of the next 20 minutes, I'll demonstrate that to you, but in a nutshell, our legacy of innovation is standing us in great stead for this next evolution. And of course, as we are in the Baltic Security Conference, all of these changes have a foundation, or need to have a foundation built in security and giving customers, giving users the greatest degree of confidence that these new services, these new operating models are secure and can protect their business and grow their business further. Our mobile devices now have become ubiquitous um, in the workforce, transforming not just how we work, but where and when we work in that process. And again, you know, that's really, really important, but these are now the most critical endpoints that we have that are facing the internet 
And so from a corporate perspective, these are the vulnerable zones, if you like. This is where users are downloading applications, they're consuming content and services, they're accessing a variety of networks. I'm sure if you access LMT, for example, as a colleague was just talking about, you can get a very secure, connected experience. But not every network that you access will offer that same degree of benefit. Um, and therefore, that creates a risk, and we need to protect and secure those. Um, again, the slides are not moving forward. If you can assist, it would be wonderful. So, to provide a bit of data and context on the back of that, if you look to uh, some recent Forrester research, they've identified that employee-owned devices and company-owned mobile devices are the two most common targets for SMS phishing attacks. In fact, they are six to 10 times more likely to be the victim of those kind of attacks, SMS-based attacks, rather than email-based attacks. It's, it's hitting a trust zone, and people are automatically drawn into communicating that way. And now 80% uh, of phishing sites target mobile exclusively, specifically targeting those mobile devices. And 69% of organizations uh, have experienced at least one cyber attack, which has come about through a poorly managed internet-facing asset, typically a mobile device. So the implications of this, of these data points for companies are profound. At Samsung, for more than a decade, we've dedicated ourselves to delivering to our customers best-in-class security. But more of that a little bit later in the presentation. But what I'd like to take a look at now is the mega trend of AI. I think uh, for any conference you go to right now or any customer event you go to right now, the topic of AI is on the agenda. And in the B2B marketplace, as I said earlier, this is a really predominant topic right now. And what I'd like to do is take a few minutes to talk you through Samsung's approach to AI, how we are taking this technology and embedding it in our Samsung and products and services, and how that model, we believe, makes a difference to business customers around the world, and how it helps them secure that, their operations. So, why has Samsung got the capability to um, deliver in the world of AI? Well, here's a few sort of proof points, if you like, from along the way. You know, Galaxy AI, as we've recently announced this year, is at the heart of our strategy and the heart of our products and service offering for consumers and businesses going into the future. And we have six R&D centers around the world dedicated to AI. So we are putting resource in the terms of people, but also resource in the form of money into the development of this next evolution of smartphone. We have, and this number changes every single day, but 3,000 AI-related patents filed since 2017. Uh, so those teams are working hard to create and develop new innovation, ensure that that's registered. And whilst I sit in the mobile business of Samsung in Europe, we, of course, offer other products and services from uh, heating and cooling systems to televisions, refrigerators, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. And that AI capability is being developed to be deployed across that, those range of services to add value to the customer experience. But coming back to our business customers, what, what are the issues that they are seeing? And when you think about AI processing today, most of that process is, is implemented in the cloud, which of course is due to the size and the complexity of the models and the huge processing power needed to run them. What's really exciting with the advent of uh, new mobile technology and develops, developments in mobile technology, such as the Samsung Galaxy S24 that was launched earlier this year, much of that AI processing can be moved onto the device. And what's pretty evident in the industry trend we are seeing and the conversations we're having with customers is that for generative AI to scale up and reach its full potential, we need a hybrid model. And so at Samsung, we have 
uh, invested and uh, working to deploy this hybrid model. So what is the hybrid model? Well, it's an architecture that will seamlessly maximize the resource utilization efficiency, both in using the cloud and where relevant and where suitable at the edge. And in this instance, the edge being the mobile device. So putting that additional power into your hands. Why is this a big deal? Well, on-device AI is exciting for many reasons. Firstly, it's going to help companies manage the increasing cost of using AI. So the cost per query of AI-based search is expected to be some 10 times higher than traditional search. So this can clearly make a significant impact to an organization's cost base. At a time where we look across Europe, we're all seeing um, different economic pressures, difficult, different political pressures, and organizations are fighting hard every day to be able to survive. And so we're seeing many organizations looking towards this for this efficiency of operation, and we expect that to continue to grow um, throughout the next few months and into 2025. So we really believe that this can be um, an, a game changer for the business. And our first foray has been into the S24, as uh, just demonstrated here, and there is a wonderful Samsung uh, facility within this building. So if you haven't taken a look yet, please do take the opportunity to experience that this afternoon. Um, so we firmly believe that this can be a game changer in the world, whole new world of workplace operations, efficiencies, new jobs and allowing customers to do much more and allow their end users to do much more. I mentioned at the start around the growing powerful mobile solutions that are being deployed. Well, that's putting more and more needs, more and more requirements from the customers, the end users, on what they want to do within that device. And that's never seen more than in uh, the B2B environment when you're trying to perform your daily tasks. And at Samsung, we're very proud of the developments that we've made over the last few months. Uh, and we really see our evolution now from being a feature phone provider into a smartphone provider, and now moving into this world of the AI-powered smartphone. And we've delivered a whole range of capability to both business and consumer customers. So AI features powered on the device that can enhance how you communicate, um, how you perform certain tasks, um, how you can record and capture notes and information. So it's an exciting time and we're already seeing business customers taking on these kind of services and using them within their daily operations. To give you just a few examples of these, uh, and there are many more within this space, but starting with Intelligent Business Assistant. And this is something that I particularly enjoy using. Uh, whether my team enjoy me using it, I don't know, but I will go to a meeting and I will capture on my device often shorthand notes of what's happened at the meeting, you know, what the key uh, actions are, and then I'll press the Galaxy AI button and I can choose the format for how that is displayed. Uh, whether I want it formal, sort of professional, structured, action-oriented, whether I want a summary of those notes, or even if I'm feeling more excitable than normal, I can create it in a very social style of communication. And within minutes, I can then send that information in a, a meaningful format to my colleagues, to my customers, uh, and allow them to be able to see what took place at that particular meeting. Ideal for sort of sessions like this where you're almost speed dating in meetings. So that's particularly a powerful solution. Also from a B2B perspective, what we're calling borderless business interaction. So we're using AI capability to provide translation, principally on two levels, from um, uh, speaking and then turning that to text and conversion of uh, conversation, but also the ability to have live conversations and tran have translation capability intercepting that live conversation. So how is this being used in 
business right now, we are seeing particularly frontline services, particularly um, public sector frontline services, who are dealing with a, a range of uh, communities and audiences. And so policing, for example, are using this translation service to be able to um, deal with uh, their communities, their customers, as they're dealing with them in their police operations. But also we're seeing that extended to healthcare services, um, social welfare services, immigration services. Yeah, the need for this um, is particularly rising and it works very effectively. We currently support 13 um, languages, which does include Latvian in that as well, uh, which is good news, uh, and that is expanding um, all of the time. And finally, uh, you know, enhancing how quickly people can get their jobs done, effortless information search. We have a capability for circle to search where when you're engaging with your device, you can see something on the screen and simply circle it with your finger and then it will automatically search that information, allowing for productivity. And we're seeing customers today use this capability and actually saying to us, right, please give us the API for that so we can embed it into our applications and software services. Um, so that's exciting opportunities for us to think about in the future. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, in the last two weeks, we've actually expanded the reach of this AI capability to a much broader audience. Um, so we've more than 6x the number of customers in Europe that can now access all of these AI features, taking it onto S23, our Z Flip 5 and Fold 5 series, and some of our tablet base through the S9. Um, so becoming more and more prevalent in the offers and the use cases of customers across Europe and around the world. And of course, we will continue to extend that. So I mentioned that mobile devices are uh, ubiquitous and I'm sure within your own businesses you're seeing more and more mobile devices deployed or, and this is the typical case we're seeing, is much, much greater depth and use cases within those uh, devices. So from government organizations, financial services organizations, frontline worker organizations across manufacturing, transport and logistics, retail and hospitality, utilities, energy, defense, more and more mobile devices um, are being deployed and put into the workplace. And of course, as I mentioned, they are the access point and the most commonly used access point uh, to, to reaching the internet. And now on top of that, we're enhancing all of those magical things that can go on the device with an AI capability, which exponentially increases the kind of things that you want to do and can do as a user with that device. So it needs securing. And what can we do to help our customers in that space? Well, another piece of work that we are uh, working heavily on is around the topic of data sovereignty. And it's a really uh, important and evolving part of the security story. So what does it mean? Well, most organizations that we work with want to maintain a tight control over their data. And so, for example, rather than having that uploaded to a third-party cloud for processing, they want to be able to prevent and control that. So we are putting that control and that decision into the hands of the IT administrators. So giving them granular, easy to use device management tools that offer full control over how they allow corporate AI data to be processed. Very simply put, if your organization doesn't want to be processing data within the cloud, the IT administrators can simply toggle a switch and deploy that for all of their mobile devices for, for their console. So it's another example of the value of on-device AI and how the powerful endpoint solutions can help businesses secure their operations, but also allow them to experience and enjoy and develop the offerings that they have through these new powerful tools of Galaxy AI. And the other major trend around security 
is zero trust, and I'm sure that this has been on the agenda a few times already today. Our Samsung Knox capability is built from the hardware up. So from the hardware right the way through to the software, to the consoles that then allow you to manage it, delivering a highly secure mobile platform. And now the big trend that we're seeing from customers is around zero trust, to deliver the most secure infrastructure. I, when I was here last year, I talked about this. It was very much an emerging capability for what we were introducing and had announced that only a few short weeks before that. But the principle is zero trust is never trust, always verify. So it's like having a highly suspicious nature uh, and everything that goes on within your devices, you're assuming that this is um, potentially a, a rogue act and it needs to be verified in that space. Traditional model of access control would be, okay, Phil's given his username and his password, I'll give him full access to everything that that profile allows. Within the world of zero trust, we actually uh, will provision um, least uh, privilege access until that, uh, uh, that transaction, that device has been verified as being secure, as being the right person. And so this is a fundamental shift, and many customers and organizations are looking at this today. From our perspective, it's about reinforcing that dedication to unwavering vigilance, safeguarding the integrity of enterprise data, and preserving the privacy of users, which is particularly important. And obviously, Europe goes further than many other regions in ensuring that privacy of users is respected and upheld. And um, as I also mentioned last year, the Biden administration uh, mandated that government organizations that handle sensitive data must move to a zero trust architecture. They made that decision in 2021, shortly after Biden came into office. And actually, September of this year is when that is happening. All of those departments have to move and be supported uh, within that zero trust infrastructure. Uh, my colleagues in the US are working very closely to ensure that we can be uh, the provider of choice as we are into those secure and classified worlds in the US right now. But this is rippling. You know, we often see what happens in the government US have a, an influence and a rippling um, into Europe. And hopefully, uh, Jacek, my colleague from our public affairs team, is nodding and agreeing with that. Um, and we can see this kind of move happening around government, but not just government. You know, commercial enterprises are looking at this space as well. So how can we help our customers? Samsung Knox platform is our platform of choice for delivering this. We believe it's uh, industry leading, and for over a decade now, we've been driving and developing the Samsung Knox portfolio. The mission of our development team when they started with this was to create the most secure mobile platform available on the market. And we really believe that they've done that, and I will hopefully demonstrate that to you over the course of the next couple of slides. But it's not just about security, actually. It's a comprehensive suite of on-premise and cloud-based management and productivity solutions that provide customers with a full experience and offering uh, that allows them to get their business up and running. Our philosophy on our security principle is built on three um, tenets. Designed and built secure, so built from the hardware up, securing it right through the software layer and ensuring that we are certified um, to meet even the most exacting requirements of governments and military organizations. Fundamentally, we believe uh, about being open to innovation. So there is, there is, I don't believe there's a single provider in the world that, for B2B customers that can deliver the entire solution set on their own. The right way to do this is to build a platform that allows other partners to bring their expertise and capabilities onto that platform. And I'll show you a couple of those in a moment. And as mentioned, uh, we offer a suite of uh, offerings and services. So it's about tools for the business to be able to develop that appropriately to meet the customer needs. So 
what comes together in the Samsung Knox portfolio, I'm not going to spend, a, we could easily spend a few hours talking about this particular slide. But in essence, at the heart of our offering, the heart of our security proposition is the Knox Suite offering. And this very simply allows our customers to secure their products and services in the way that they need to do it, to deploy them effortlessly and seamlessly in the way that they want to do it without taking up huge amounts of um, resource and hours to get that job done. They can do it from a console and out the box those devices are ready. They can manage those devices in terms of the services that they can use, the software that can be deployed on those devices. As an organization, you don't want to have a suite of uh, applications and services that are critical for your business that run on a certain version of software and then for Samsung to suddenly smash over the top of that a software version that renders those applications uh, uh, useless at that moment in time. So we put the control of that software upgrade into the hand of the IT administrators so that they can decide, give themselves confidence that that's the right software for them and then deploy that at their needs. And we provide the ability to analyze their estate, to see what their assets are doing uh, and take action accordingly um, with regards to software versions they're on, battery power they're on, potential bugs they're seeing in, uh, uh, in um, third-party software, etc. And on top of that, we have capabilities such as Knox Configure that allows our customers to deploy to their devices these, uh, the range of uh, look and feel and the services that they want their end users to have. So for a business customer, uh, if I'm working for, say, let's stick with LMT again, they can switch on their device and a suite of LMT services could be downloaded automatically to that device and an LMT um, look and feel. And we also have, and this was developed uh, in Europe, in Poland, in one of our R&D centers, a uh, service called NoxGuard, which was designed to really help minimize the amount of fraud that was being seen as, as uh, premium smartphones became the predominant choice for end users. Uh, many uh, countries across Europe were seeing, and mobile operators in particular, were seeing huge fraud coming from people buying devices, paying a month, and then disappearing. The device was never seen again. And NoxGuard is a value-added service that allows us um, to track, monitor, fix, brick those devices as needed. So it's a suite of services designed to be part of uh, the enterprise's strategy, and also, you know, it's fundamentally open. So we're aware, and when the, we were bringing this service to market, we knew that organizations will have MDM providers that they've chosen already. So we need to be able to work with and easily embed all of our offerings into that console. We didn't want customers to have to rip out that technology and, and deploy Samsung, because um, that would inevitably act as a barrier to adoption. So I mentioned certifications, and I mentioned um, um, government agencies, and this is an important part of our offering. In Europe, we have two dedicated R&D teams to mobile, particularly focused around mobile B2B. One in the UK, and then a much larger facility in Warsaw in Poland, bringing huge amount of expertise that help us to deliver these kind of things that you can see on the screen here. Certifications from major bodies that act on behalf of government, such as Common Criteria, BSI, um, NCSC, etc., just to name a few. And then the governments themselves, so our philosophy is if we can meet the most demanding of requirements from government organizations, then we feel confident that we can also meet the requirements of every other enterprise organization who will have equally important requirements. We also, in the last survey from Gartner, um, we received a strong rating, 27 out of 30 from the scoring, which is the highest they awarded to a mobile security platform. And we're part of the Android Enterprise recommended um, portfolio with many, many devices in that. So from a customer's perspective, when they're looking at Samsung and saying, have they got the credentials to be able to secure and manage our business? It's a tick, tick, tick in terms of the offerings that we have and can meet those particular needs and utilize those kind of resources I mentioned, like the R&D teams in, in Warsaw, to really prove the point of this evolving um, security world. 
Since then, uh, and since the introducing you, we've made a great deal of progress, in particular in the world of our Zero Trust um, platform, and um, in two particular areas around additional endpoint security controls and enabling um, network access control. We will continue to enhance this, and this year we'll be adding more new monitoring control features which offer improved visibility and remediation capabilities for mitigating security events. So this is all part of this continuing monitoring, never trust, always verify. And so we are leveraging a number of key partners to be able to do this. Um, and those are major global brands that we are working with. So we firmly believe that we have to embrace the open ecosystem for zero trust. Customers expect it, customers are looking for solutions from the major brand providers around the world, uh, and we are not intending to let them down in any way, in shape or form with that. So firstly, um, we've been cooperating with Microsoft and last summer we announced uh, a partnership with Microsoft Intune to offer the world's first on-device hardware-backed attestation solution, which adds peace of mind and an additional layer of security, protecting against risks of compromised devices gaining access to your network and your sensitive information. And We've recently started working with Cisco and their secure access uh, service edge. So this is all about providing zero trust on uh, network access and on those edges, um, which will provide um, the only Android OEM solution as part of um, the Cisco uh, proposition. So again, this will provide customers with choice to allow them to work with the infrastructure that they have. I'm conscious of time, so I'm accelerating slightly. Um, and so, as I mentioned at the start, our legacy of innovation, hopefully you can see here that our mobile innovation has been dedicated to building a security model that adapts to the increasing complexities of the modern world, the increasing complexities of business users. And at the heart of all of that is Samsung Knox. And the, the approach that we have is that it's secure, it's intelligent, and it's unwavering it's in, in its approach. And then it runs and supports and secures all of our devices that we can offer. And finally, uh, when we look at the Knox platform, built with security at the heart, built with government grade security, uh, at the heart of that offering. And then over the last decade, we have expanded a full range of services to this for managed devices, for unmanaged devices, a whole range of capability, some of which I've touched on during this presentation. Um, but what I want to say to close with, as I said in my opening, um, you know, it's a really exciting time for the mobile industry. It's a really exciting time for businesses and business customers, there's a huge amount of opportunity and capability that lies ahead and many, many opportunities to create. So my message would be, you know, please come to us and let's create those opportunities together. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Philip. Um, from the organizers, thank you so much oh. for the support and for thank being you here. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we need to make a picture, perhaps uh, yeah. with the certificate, yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, so um, perhaps any questions in the audience? Not so sure. The afternoons are challenging in this regard. So uh, thanks again for coming. Thank you. It's been All a right. pleasure. All right. Thank you so much.